our bass and mixer tap has started to whistle. Even when it's turned off, when somebody flushes the loo, a trickle of water comes out, along with a high-pitched noise. That's clearly not good, and in this video, I'm going to fix it. The whistling is air being forced out under the water pressure, the tone changing when the pressure does, and finally stopping when the system's full. What's causing it is one of the valves or a faulty seal, and to get that fixed we're going to need to take our tap apart, starting by turning the water off, and making absolutely sure we're not going to cause a flood. To get into the tap we first need to remove the end caps. If you're lucky these unscrew just with your fingers, but you may need a pair of pliers. But go gently because if your tap's anything like ours, they're easy to damage. Under the cap is the bolt that holds the handle secure, usually with a cross-headed top, and this can be removed with a screwdriver. Once again, if you're lucky, this comes out relatively easily, as does the removal of the handle. But one of the unexpected themes of this video is what to do when it doesn't. The bolt on the hot tap proved much more difficult, but a longer shafted screwdriver provided that extra bit of leverage, and with a bit of welly, I got it loose. But not so lucky with the handle, that was firmly wedged, and pulling it was getting nowhere. So obviously I was going to need a lever of some sort, finally settling for a pair of long nose pliers. With these I could at least get behind the arms of the handle, which I rotated to try and even up the pressure. Eventually it started to give, but in my haste I made a mistake. I hadn't appreciated quite how soft the metal of the tap was, and I should have protected the top of that valve cover from the back of the pliers, perhaps with a thin strip of wood. Something like an ice lolly stick would have been great. But we all know what they say about hindsight, and hopefully, as you're watching this video, you'll avoid the same problem. Now to get to the valve, we need to take that cover off. And once again, doing it by hand isn't going to work. We're going to need some tools. But this time we've learnt from our mistake, and we're going to use some protection. So the jaws of the mole grips don't dig into the surface of the relatively soft metal, or worse still, slip and strip off the chrome surface. For this I'm using some electrical insulation tape, winding it round to provide several layers. This is ideal because it's tough enough to protect, but with enough give for the jaws of our mole grip to get a bit of bite. Just make sure they're adjusted so they don't dig in too much, just enough to get a bit of purchase. Then firmly, but gradually, we can loosen that cover with the grips, until it's free moving enough to finish off by hand. With that cover removed, we can now get at the valve, and we can see the insulation tape has done its job, protecting the chrome but giving us something to grip. Now we've got the shiny cosmetic bits of the tap out of the way, we can really get down to business. And as these parts aren't intended to be on view, we're provided with a nice hex nut, which will make life much easier, especially after a good soaking with WD-40. Even then we might need quite a bit of torque just to get it started, but once it's on the move, it shouldn't take long to remove the entire valve assembly. And here's what we've got, a quarter turn valve with rotating ceramic washers. And you can see roughly how it works. When one of the ceramic discs rotates, it opens up triangular vents, allowing the water to flow from the centre, through those slots on the side, and into the body of the tap, where hot and cold are mixed. The other valve is removed in exactly the same way, and the first thing I want to do is get rid of some of that lime scale. Then I'll be able to have a good look and see what the problem is. I've already got my suspicions. The cold valve and cover came out together, and actually pretty easily, suggesting the valve hadn't been anywhere near tight enough. And even if the rubber seal hadn't been letting water through, it certainly had been letting air, hence the whistling. The good news being that it doesn't look like I need to replace any parts, and a thorough descaling and clean is probably all they need. Even if one of the cartridges had been damaged, or just the rubber seal, a replacement wouldn't have been expensive, but you do need to make sure you get the right one, as the length of the bodies and the stems varies considerably. But we're all good, so after a bit of a clean up, we're ready for reassembly. During this I'm going to be using some silicon grease, very much optional, but I'm hoping that if I have to do the job again, it's going to make it a bit easier, with a small amount on each screw thread, stopping them seizing up quite so much. Just be a bit careful, because there's some sharp surfaces in there. Then having checked our valve seals once again, we can screw it back in and tighten it up with the spanner. Now this is the valve we think was the culprit for the whistling, by not being tight enough. But it's also important not to over tighten, as this can crush and distort the seals, preventing them doing their job. So at the point when you think it's tight, tighten it just a tiny bit more. Now onto the valve for the hot tap, fitting it in exactly the same way. Also checking that the valve seating is completely clean, so we get a good seal. Now both of my valve units are the same, they each have a traditional anti-clockwise turn for open, which suits my more rotary style handle. 
however for lever taps which you want to open when you pull them forward. You may have non-matching valves. These will be obviously colour coded. A red seal for hot and a blue one for cold. So it's pretty straightforward getting the right one in the right side. But whichever sort you've got, fitting it will be the same. Just remember not to over tighten. Now we come to the chrome plated valve covers and once again I'm giving a generous application of the silicone grease. Hopefully that will avoid needing to use the grips should I have to do the job again and I'm just tightening it up with my fingers. Here you can see the slight damage I did with the pliers but there's little point dwelling on that. It can just join my very long list of things I should do differently next time and hopefully using the silicone grease on all the parts during reassembly, including the splined handle shafts, will avoid the need for brute force and the potential for damage of the chrome covered brass. Then with both handles replaced on the shafts and a little bit of even pressure to push them home, I can replace the bolts. Once again, tightening them up just enough to hold everything in place. Then with both handles secured, all that remains is to tidy away the tools and replace the end caps, just making sure we get the right one on the right handle. And that's the job done. In my case, no more whistling, but the same procedure should be equally good for a simple dripping tap. Now to turn the water back on and give it all a test. And it's looking and sounding great. No more whistling and no more trickling water. Another problem solved.